your way and your blessing will bless you. Redemption Christian Center of Trinidad and Tobago presents Light in the Word with Bishop Dr. Victor Gill. Say you provide This time we would like to prepare ourselves to receive from the word of God. I'd like to invite Bishop Dr. Victor Gill. Put your hands together for him as he comes. Praise the Lord. Hebrews chapter 2, 1 through verse 3. Therefore we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things we have heard. Lest at any time we should let them slip. For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward. How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? Which first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed to us by them that heard him. Today I want to share with you on the subject. Give more earnest heed. The word of God says, therefore we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. Have you ever heard something that really, really blew your mind? As we would say for want of a better word, something that was so outstanding that it was difficult for you to fully compute. As we would say that we couldn't wrap our minds around it. 2,500 years ago, a pagan king by the name of Nebuchadnezzar heard and saw some things in a dream that was so astounding, that was so great. After he came out of the dream, he wanted to remember that thing so much that he called his magicians, his soothsayers, to tell him what he dreamt and forgot. And when they could not have told him what he dreamt and forgot, he decided that he would kill all of them. He was willing to wipe out so many people just to remember what he heard in the vision. And what he heard was an analysis of the history of the world, a prophetic analysis of the history of the world from his time right up to our time today and beyond. And uh, that, is, that indeed was a tremendous vision. And he wanted to remember, and thank God Daniel was able, as he went before the Lord, to get that, the message of the dream that he forgot and reminded the king. I am sure many of us have heard something or things 
that was really, really outstanding. You know, I always, for myself, I, I have heard many things, but when I think about something that is really, really outstanding, that really, really captures my attention, I, I, I always like to think about what I have been told with regards to the vastness of the universe. You know, I have been told that the moon is 225,000 miles away from the earth. And at the speed of light, which is 186,000 miles per second, to get there will just be one and a half second at the speed of light. 225,000 miles in one and a half second. But the sun is so much further. 93 million miles, it will take eight minutes at that same speed. But what really, really, really baffles me is that the, I am told that the nearest star outside of our solar system, so our solar system that is made up of Mars and Neptune and Venus and all these, these, these stars that we know are close to us surrounding the Earth. So outside of that, the nearest star, I am told, at the speed of light, it will take not a minute, one and a half seconds or eight minutes to get there. Alpha Centauri, but it will take four years. And that is just the nearest one. That is just our galaxy. We are not talking about the expanse of this galaxy that we are in, the Milky Way, let alone the billions of galaxies that are out there. So, this is something that really, really captures my mind and I find it difficult to compute. Because I'm also told that that same distance of Alpha, Alpha Centauri traveling at supersonic speed, the speed of song, 768 miles per hour to get to that nearest star outside of our solar system. A jet traveling at supersonic speed will take 68 million years to get there. And that's just the nearest one. But I want to say this. Even if all of the marvelous things that mankind has heard. If we will compound all together. Whether it's astronomy. Whether it's astrology. Whether it's the science. Whether it's just natural phenomenon. Whatever it is. If we compound all together. All the things that. Mankind have heard if we put them all in one. It cannot be compared with what we have heard in the message of the gospel of the grace of God through Jesus Christ. It cannot be compared. Because when we think about the vastness of the world, after all, the one who came and died for us is the one who made it. And yet our mind cannot get around what he made, let alone think about it. That one should take our place in death. So my first point is today, the great things we have, the, rather the greatest thing we have ever heard. The, the greatest thing we have ever heard. Hebrews 2 and verse 1 of text says, Therefore we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. There is nothing greater, I say, than what we have heard in the gospel. And 
the word of God is telling us we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things we have heard. There's a ring on those words. The things we have heard. Oh Lord. The things we have heard. The things we have heard. Have you heard? We ought to give the more earnest heed to the things we have heard. The stupendous things. The great things. The transcendent things. The mind-blowing things, the things that Paul referred to as unspeakable, or rather Peter, as unspeakable and full of glory. Paul referred to it as God's unspeakable gift. He said, and even angels desire to look into it. The things we have heard, the things we have heard, the things we have heard. Oh, when the Spirit of the Lord ignited this to me in my heart, I could hear some tell the people, remind them, repeat it, the things we have heard. The things we have heard. We have heard great things. We have heard stupendous things. We have heard transcendent things. We have heard awe-inspiring things. We have heard some things. We have heard some things that are extraordinarily great. We have heard it. We have heard some glorious things in the message of the love and, and grace of God through Jesus Christ. Nothing can be greater. We have heard some things that demand our fullest attention. There are many things that we can concern ourselves with. But nothing can be compared with the things that we have heard in the gospel. The message of the gospel came to us by one who is above all former ministers. Above all former messengers, above all angels, above one who is divine and one with absolute credibility. And given the content, the nature, and the greatness of the message in the mind of God, I believe. It would have been unthinkable to send such a message with anyone else except his son. One who is more credible than any angel. Because what a message it is. To think about the height we are called to and the depth we are delivered from. That we should be called. Behold, the Bible says, what man of love God has bestowed upon us that we should be called his children. We have heard some things. I said it comes to us from one who is divine and one who has absolute credibility. That also lends to its greatness because it, it's the source of it was not man. This message did not originate in the mind of men. It originated from the very mind and heart of the eternal and the almighty creator God. As a matter of fact, he himself came to preach it first. And the Bible says it was confirmed by those who heard him firsthand. So what we have today is what we heard, what we received on firsthand witnesses who heard him. Anybody out there? We have heard some things. 
We have heard, we have heard, we have heard. We have heard. We have heard some stupendous things, some magnanimous things, some glorious things, some quintessent things, some mind-blowing things. We have heard. Because of the greatness of what we have heard, we need to be always careful to maintain the right attitude. And this is my second point. We need to beware of drifting. The word of God says, verse 1, Therefore we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. The words, lest at any time we should let them slip, convey a pity of a man who, with something precious in his hand, but he's holding it with a slack hand, and therefore it is liable to fall from his hand and be destroyed or be lost. The actual expression, however, in the original Greek word is even more striking. The word slip is a Greek word that actually means to drift or to drift away from. And the picture is not so much the thing slipping from you, but you slipping from it by a gradual, unnoticeable, slow drift away. The word is parallel. The preposition para, it means past. It means beyond. And the word rail, it means to flow. Therefore, parallel means to flow past or to drift past as a ship. Figuratively, figuratively it means to drift away gradually by an almost unnoticeable movement. It means to drift past a certain point without recognizing it. It means to move unnoticed as a thief. Stiltly, quietly, unnoticeably. It means to deviate from the truth slowly, stiltly, as a thief. The slow and on a, listen to me, the slow and on apparent drifting is what we need to be careful of. Because it's not swift. It is not discernible. It is not apparent. But yet it is real. Imagine a boat not firmly anchored to the anchorage. The occupants are inside in the cabin so they're not seeing what's going on on the outside. And it drifts quietly with little friction that the passengers do not know that they are moving until they come up on the deck and realize, hey, we are in a strange place. That is the imagery of the word. Lest we drift away. So the things which we have heard and which we ought to be anchored to. If we are not extremely careful, we, the Bible is saying, can drift away from them and not even realize that you are drifting. The things, the great things that you have heard. Anybody out there? I say we have heard some things. We have heard, we have heard, we have heard, we have heard, we have heard. No greater message has ever been uttered from mortal tongues than the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ. The 
There, are some, there is something called the deception of the gradual. The deception of the gradual. A little drip, 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 drip will fill a bucket. Will fill a bucket. I want to share with you some currents that can cause you to drift slowly, unapparently, stiltly. Just like a cut strong currents, sailors face to turn them away from their course. There are some currents that we face as Christians to turn us away from the course. Number one, you ready? The current of years. Time of a way. If we don't put certain things in place and nail them down, time has a way of changing the best of us. Time has a way of causing people to move away from their first love, their first commitment, their first fervor, uh, the first, their first zeal. Time has a way. You've got to be aware of the current of the years. Another current is the current of familiarity. No matter how great something is, sometimes when you get too familiar with it, you can lose the reverence, lose the respect, <laughs> lose the appreciation. There's a saying, familiarity breeds content. We got to be careful of the current of familiarity. Oh yes, Jesus loves me. This I know for the Bible tells me so. Oh, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And what man, uh, behold what man of love it is uh, that God has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. And as many as we see him, then he gave the power to, to become the sons of God. But familiarity, as great as it is, familiarity can cause it to lose its impact on your soul. We got to watch at the current of persecution. It is becoming more and more unpopular to be called a Christian. Right now, the church is split down the, the center between mainline Christianity and evangelical Christianity. Because mainline Christianity, which incorporates the Presbyterians, the Lutherans, the Methodists, the Episcopalians, they are now saying, we accept the gays. They are putting policies in place to have them in their schools. And the evangelicals, long time to say you are a Christian would have qualified you for the job. But now when you say you are a Christian and they check your record that you are evangelical, you are also homophobic. And homophobic means that you are discriminatory. And that you discriminate means that you are pushing hate. People right now are losing their jobs in the United States. Christians who qualify are being denied. The fourth largest bank in Canada, the Bank of Montreal, told one company, they said we are starting with the lawyers. We want to see a statistics of those that you are dealing with. 
Because if there is not a clause to accept gays, to see homosexuality as a neutral sexual orientation, if you can't give us that, we are not dealing with you. And not only are we not dealing with you, but if anybody in your clientele, in your group of companies, don't have that position, we reject them too, and we reject you because of them. So you have to drop them. And that is happening across this, the, the, the world. And so in the near future, Christians will have to make up their mind. Whether they will stay with the true church or cross over the line. We have to also deal with a current of success. Success has a way of taking us away from God. Success could be very dangerous. Success has turned away Many, you see, because sometimes when people become successful, they say, well, you know, I have enough money in the bank. I have enough this. I have enough that. I don't really need God. The Bible said it was when Uzziah was strong that his heart was lifted up in pride. Not when he was weak. When he was strong, when he became successful, then he fell. So success is a great current. When we become successful, we tell ourselves we don't need to pray as we used to. David did not fall while he was running with a few men, but while he was king. Solomon fell while he was the richest and the wisest. How many Christians were in church faithfully until they got a job. Until they got a car. The same car should bring you to church and time took you in a different direction from the church. How many were seeking God? They wanted God until they got married. When they got married, Pastor, you don't understand. I got the family to take care of. And the prayer has gone through the window. It's now planning for a better life. The current of success. Is coming your way, a blessing is coming your way, and your blessing will bless. You.